That's my film look. Hey guys, how y'all doing out there? It's time for another tutorial from Pinnacle Studio Pro. Okay, you know I eventually had to break down a film look tutorial for my Pinnacle peeps in the YouTube verse. Wanna see it? Here you go. How did you do that? Whoa! Holy shit! Ow! Oh boy! All you have to do is ask. Shoot in 24 frames per second. Hollywood films are shot at 24 frames per second, so that's what you need to do. Most HD camcorders and DSLRs shoot at 30 frames per second or 29.9 frames per second if you want to be all anal about it. If you have the loop, snag a device that shoots at 24 frames per second because this is the first step to getting that elusive film look. Try using shallow depth of field. You can create a shallow depth of field shot by zooming in on an object or subject as close as you can and then opening up the iris or adjusting the aperture on your DSLR. This decreases the depth of the video. Shallow depth of field shots create soft edges around the subject and makes it look a lot more like film. Shake up your shutter speed. You want to double the speed of the frame rate in the shutter. When you shoot at 24 frames per second, adjust your shutter speed to 148. Doubling the shutter speed decreases the amount of motion blur you experience when shooting in 24p. This keeps that pesky motion blur in its place. Get back in your place, motion blur! Create a letterbox for your viewers. This isn't a box for your viewers to send you letters, it's an effect. Using a letterbox effect creates more of a cinematic look. The letterbox effect places black bars above and below the video. You can do this by simply giving your video an aspect ratio of 2 to 1. You want the width of the video to double the height of the video. If your footage was shot at 1920 by 1080 resolution, you want to crop the height of your video to 960 pixels. 1920 divided by 2? 960. Correct that color and then grade it. Shooting at 24 frames per second creates a flat image. It basically desaturates the image, so you need to do color correction and color grading to bring the color levels back. But you will bring them back where you want them to be. Color correction is the process of matching the exposure and light balance of every clip in your project. It can be a long and tedious process, but it is a necessary one if you want everything to be on point. Color grading is more of a creative process. It's the process of giving your film the look and feel that you want it to have. It sets up the visual tone, color theme, lighting, and the basic look and feel of your project or scene. There is no wrong or right way to color grade because it's all up to you. As you tell your story, you decide on whether you want things to be stylized or if you want it to be plain Jane. The real challenge is choosing what you want the scene in your film to look like. Once you have an idea of what you want each scene to say to the audience, you should start coming up with some sick ideas for color grading. Let's jump into Pinnacle Studio 17 Ultimate and take a look at some of the tools we can use for color correction and color grading. Before we get started, let's make sure our project settings are ready for some 24 frames per second loving. Click on Setup. Control panel, and then project settings. Now you want to go to new movie project format and select HD 1920 by 1080 24p. Because like we said, you got to make sure that your project settings are set up for the same type of file that you created, which was 24 frames per second. Now we just got to click OK. Good to go, baby. Let's bring our footage we recorded into the timeline. Now, if we play this footage back, you see that it's 
in beautiful 24 frames per second but I can see a little bit of noise in this too so I want to get rid of that noise first so I'm gonna right click on the video clip go to open effects editor go to camera and then noise reduction now I'm gonna leave it on default but if you want to you can actually go to settings and then create a motion mask where you can see where the movement is coming from stuff like that I got a lot of leaves and things moving so that's why I look like that but I'm good I'm good with how it is so next I want to go to color And I'm going to go to image correction CPU. Now, keep in mind, you could use base color correction if you want to, uh, auto color correction if you want to. I'm going to use image correction CPU. Under automatics, I'm going to select white balance. So help me get my white right. And I'm going to leave everything in this setting alone. Then I'm going to run on down to fundamentals. And I'm going to change my brightness here to 8. Let me brightness out a little bit in that. And I'm going to change my saturation to 45. Turn it way up. Bring some of the greens and browns back into this bland photograph. And you know that the saturation is going to boost up the vividness of all my colors. And I'm going to go down to Selective Brightness. Now in the next section, I'm going to change the mid-range. Uh, changing this setting represents the amount of tone between shadows and highlights. I'm going to change my mid-range to about a uh, negative 30. Looks good. Bringing some of those shadows back into the world. Sweetness. Now, if that ain't a film look, I don't know what is. Now, keep in mind, color correction takes a lot of practice. And I color corrected this ahead of time. You may need to apply different settings to your footage. And you may need to put in some practice to get it where you want it to be. Now, I'm done with the color correction. So, I'm going to click OK. And now I have my source footage up here, as you can see, and I also have my clip in the timeline. So if I click on the dual mode, you can see them side by side. And you can definitely see the difference between the flat 24 frames per second with no saturation, everything on flat. And then you can tell the difference of when I bring the uh, color correction into play and make it look all juicy, juicy, full of juicy colors and stuff. Now that we're done with color correction, you can opt to do some color grading if you wish to do so. It's really up to you. You can leave it like this or you can change it up. So I'm going to right click on the video clip. I'm going to go to open effects editor. I'm going to go to add-ons. And I'm going to select Red Giant Filmmaker Toolkit. Now you can choose Cosmo for skin tones, Mojo for some of those uh, really intense type scenes, or you could choose Magic Bullet Looks. I'm going to choose Magic Bullet Looks. And I go over to the plugin and click on Open. You can choose the look presets on the left to select the color grade you prefer for your video or film. If I hover over looks, you got a lot of different categories here that you could choose from. I'm going to go to Master Artist Pack. And they got some pretty good looks in here like Michelangelo, which looks pretty sharp. I like the look of that. Also got uh, Picasso Rose, which is pretty good looking too. Renoir, a little bit of, you know, 
uh, more depth on it, a little blur. And you also got Turner, which puts a little blur, a little bit of light. In reality, you know, you can pick whichever one you want. Let's just say I pick Turner. Now, once you pick a preset, there will be some available options down here for each preset. They're all going to be different options available to you. But if you wanted to change any of these presets, you could by just clicking on it with your left mouse. And, you know, I could change the diffusion or I can change the color correction within this preset. I'm going to leave that all alone and I'm going to click on OK. And I'll click OK again. Nice. If you want to, you can compare the source footage to the video clip in the timeline. Just make sure that the source footage that you use is selected up in your media bin here. And then click on dual mode. And now you can see the flat 24 frames per second image. And then the image that was color corrected and color graded. And for me, if I really wanted to use this. I would probably delete the magic bullet looks piece because I was fine with the color correction by itself. Boom. And I like it just like that personally. But it's really up to you. If you're creating a specific look, you might want to add some more depth or something else to it by using the presets for Magic Bullet looks. Once you've applied the effects you want to apply and completed correcting and grading the color, you can export your project. Just jump over to the Export tab and select the appropriate file type and resolution. Okay, mi gente. It's a wrap. With the info from this video in your arsenal, you'll be creating a film look with ease. Now you guys know the routine. The thumb. The one that's pointed in the upward direction. Click it, like it, live it, love it, hug it. Show the thumb some love. Comments. Leave me your comments. I always get back with you. If I can't answer your question, I'll point you in the right direction to get you the help you deserve. And last, but definitely not least, don't you ever forget to subscribe, baby. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.